Hey guys, Mohan Pover here and today I'm going to share some more of the lessons I got from going to the castle and learning from Dan Pena and just learning from him over the last few years. So let's get to it. This is part seven or so in this series. So let's get to it. So yeah, if you're new to this channel, this channel is all about basically me sharing my and documenting my journey in this uh, basically doing QLA and growing by acquisitions, going out there and buying companies. And I'm here to show you that if you have existing business, your best way to grow isn't by doing more sales and marketing, but it is to go and buy other businesses. And you can do that um, many times with just using the business assets, the acquisition assets as a leverage to buy those businesses. And many times, I mean, you can miss some small equity kick and that's something you can bring from your own pocket or from investors and raise that capital as well. So you don't really need to use your own money to do those deals and you can buy some really great businesses and it will probably take you the same amount of money to buy those businesses versus to go and find another client into your existing one so i'm here to share my journey in this process everything that i am learning learned um, the mistakes that i've had and kind of like um, expand on some of the lessons that i got from dan pena because some of the lessons i'm got i get from him or got from him and still getting from him are, are very simplified version of the process which i think is, is amazing i think in the end of the day everything you try to learn you want to simplify as, as much as possible but i want to give you i guess an expanded version of each of those lessons that i got in the castle to basically give you that perspective of someone who's doing deals on a regular basis and kind of like show you the challenges that i've had and i wish that i basically i wish that i had a channel like this to learn from someone because I finished the castle. Yes, I had the accountability, but I felt like I'm missing small nuances in the deal, in the process of going out there and buying businesses. Um, because yes, it's cool. You can build a dream team and get accountants and lawyers on success fees. But what's next? How do you actually find a deal, a good deal, qualify it and close it? And what do you do after that? Because many people out there, yes, maybe you can buy a business and many times those are, those are shitty businesses that you buy because you find really motivated sellers. So what do you do after that to turn them around and really make a legit good business and really make money? In it? I think that's, that's what the most important thing here is if you're going out there, you want to buy a business that you can actually turn around and grow and, and really make an impact. So this is what this channel is all about. Um, if you're new, just subscribe. Make sure you're not missing new videos by hitting the notification button. And yeah, like the video and comment below. Let me know if you ever went to the castle, if you just learned from Dan Penny just from the last, I don't know, few weeks, few months. Let me know kind of like about the, your experience with his stuff. I think his stuff is amazing and I'm still learning from his stuff. Uh, but um, yeah, subscribe and, and see the links in the description below. You have links for free business buying mastermind group and you have a links where you can send me put your personal details and then send me basically your biggest questions. And based on that, I'm creating those videos. I'm trying to post daily. Um, I have like a one day a week where I'm like spending three hours or so recording seven videos in a row. So, and then I'm posting them one day at a time. So definitely send me your ideas because that's how I'm creating my future videos. But um, yeah, let's, let's get back to today's video. So today we're going to start with the lesson and I'm going to read it, which is the consequences of a misguided decision are insignificant in the cosmos of eternity and i want to expand on that sentence because i think there's many things we can talk about so the first part of the sentence is the consequences of a misguided decision uh, let, let's start with that so what that means i think first of all it comes down to the fact that people are afraid to make decisions they're afraid to take any action they're afraid to call potential partners afraid to call potential chairmen or cfos or whatever they need, whoever they need for their board. They're afraid to call companies or cold call companies to, to figure out if the owner is willing to sell the business. They're afraid to call financial institutions. They're basically afraid to take any action. And this sentence basically shows you that, first of all, the fact that you're afraid to take action is the worst thing you can do. Like it's better for you to take action that is decisive. Like uh, there's this, another sentence from Dan saying, um, I better, I'd rather be wrong than indecisive. No, I forget the exact quote. And tell me in the comments below if you remember what I'm, what I'm talking about. But it's like, never, always, uh, never in doubt or something like that. I forgot the exact one. It doesn't matter. But um, what I'm here telling you is that it, you rather take the action even if you're um, uncertain or obviously you want to do it with certainty. But it, it's all that matters in the after day that you actually go out and take action and don't be afraid to fail. That's the main thing in this sentence or just in general in, in business and life. And I think the second part of the sentence really shows you that 
people take themselves too seriously. They think that whatever they do, everyone around them watch them and, and judge them. And I think it's all about uh, maybe taking yourself too seriously, thinking that you're the center of the universe. And what Dan is telling you is that in the end of the day, in the cosmos of times, you're just like a, a fart in the universe. Like you're just a small little piece of shit in this whole universe or, or, or this whole world, world that we have. It's like, and people, just think about it, like we're all going to die very soon. Like we're all going to die. I might die as soon as I end to, to, to record this video, right? We don't know what's going to happen. And people take themselves too seriously. Like just the fact that, you know that they say that when you die, when you're going to die and, and in your funeral, there's some people who won't even come to see you getting buried just because there, there is rain or something. So the people that really care about you, really love you, really close to you are very small. And you're basically afraid to take action because people you don't know and don't respect many times will judge you. And, and it's frustrating to see. I see even in the questions that I'm getting from people, in, in, the, in the messages that I'm getting, people are, are asking me questions that are based on fear. They're just asking me questions. So I'll put a Band-Aid over, their, over something that needs much more, um, I guess, investigation. And it all comes down, like literally, it all comes down to their mindset, their beliefs. They're afraid that if they take action, people will judge them. People will think on them differently. And you need to understand, I mean, People don't really care about you too much. Everyone cares about themselves in the end of the day. And you not taking action isn't going to help you or them. It's just like nothing going to happen. And I mean, it just makes no sense that you're making, I guess, judgment decision if to take action based on people you don't even know. And I think it comes down to the fact that you need to be selfish. Like, be okay with being selfish. And don't be afraid to do things for your own benefits. And you need to understand that in the, the world, People will eventually respect you much more if you fail versus if you didn't do anything. Like, yes, everyone can sit and just be chill and watch Netflix all day. But no one really remember you, if it will remember you or remember anything you did in this world if you just did nothing and just, you were always a spectator. You always looked out for someone else. It just, no one gives a shit about you that way. So don't be, be okay with being selfish and be okay with failing. I mean, all the most successful people that you look up to probably fail the most. Like for me, the people that I watch and, and trying to learn from, the only difference that I see in them is that they just took more action than me and just failed more than me. And obviously they have the right, they had the right support next to them to adjust them after they take action and fail. I think those are basically the only differences between those who fail and those who are not. And they okay with continuing to fail because they have the belief in themselves that eventually they'll find a way. If you don't have that, it's like you won't achieve anything. I mean, yes, you can chill and do nothing, but will you actually achieve something meaningful to help yourself, to help the people around you? No, you won't achieve shit. So yeah, it, it really comes down to you making a decision if you want to live a life of regret or you want to live a life that you're proud of, even if you failed. Like, I think I said it in other videos. I, I would take a life of failure going towards my dream every day versus a life of regret, knowing that I, I don't know, I went to the bar with my friends all the time and I went to the beach and did nothing and will regret what if, what if when, I will, when I'm about to die, I'll regret what if, what if I, what if I did here more, what if I did here, there a little bit more and try to achieve my potential just a little bit more. Um, I would rather fail all the time and actually going towards my dream and towards what I feel I can contribute to the world because you'll find out eventually um, and obviously all of you guys are in a different uh, point in your life, but when you get to a certain income level, you don't really care about yourself. Buying another car won't make you feel happy. Buying another house won't make you feel happy. It's about the contribution that you can uh, help others. Yes, obviously you want your lifestyle to have like a basic, you want you have your basic needs met and all that. But when you have that, it's all about just how can I contribute to others who maybe I were in their shoes and I want to help them grow faster. And this, what this channel is, a lot about because I was probably in your shoes a few years ago and I didn't have the support. I didn't have that 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 mentorship and that's something that I'm here to contribute because I'm, I know that I can help. And yes, obviously on the back end, I know that I'm able to get more deals that way, but it's like a win-win for everyone. Why not? I, I'm, I can help people who have no experience in business buy a multi-million dollar business and I can have equity in the process uh, or, or it's the opposite. I can buy businesses and give people the option to even 
have equity in the process by watching my back and learning from me. So I think it's win-win for everyone and I'm able to change people's life and it's worth everything. And every now and then I'm getting shitty comments and shitty emails from people who don't understand what I'm, why I'm even doing this and why I'm just not focused on, on going out there and doing more deals. Well, my answer to that is yes, I am focused on doing more deals and this is my way to do more deals, to put myself out there. And you guys are basically my way to get more deal flow, if that makes sense. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to work with me and my team who did more than 300 deals, maybe you need help to have better systems to find a better deal. Maybe you want um, a team to help you figure out if a deal is a good deal because you need people like that in your team. Or maybe you're just not sure where to get capital from to your deals. Um, we have access to all the financial institutions that you need and we sometimes even put capital ourselves into deals. So you can have the equity kick side of the things. Um, so if you want to learn more about that, and obviously we can grow the business together as 50-50 partners. So if you want to see if you're qualified to our partner program mastermind, it's a mastermind of people who are very serious about doing deals and basically um, getting deals going as soon as possible and really working together to buy those multi-million dollar business out there. So if you want to learn more about that, um, go to moanpaber.com forward slash talk and see the details there. Otherwise, see the description below. There are links to where you can send me your ideas for videos. Just put your details and send me your topics and a link to join our free business buying mastermind on Facebook. So yeah, that's it for today. Subscribe if you didn't yet, like the video and comment and let me know in the um, comments below what you think. Um, what are your thoughts about this space in general? Do you like it? Are you gonna commit to yourself to, to follow QLA or not? Let me know in the comments below and I'll, com I'll comment back. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon.